Bethesda was formed by Boise, Idaho residents Duff Johnson and Rick Jones in 1981. Three days later, they were joined by guitarists Cheese Steak Babyface Willis and Johann Steinberg Miklosevic, better known by his stage name, Steve. I, I, I like to write songs. And, and when I say that, I mean, I like to write songs. That's what it means to me at its core. It's like the point of being in a rock band. Also, women. Unable to find major success in the Midwest, Bethesda moved to L.A., where they met Jimmy Fingers and Crankshaft Williams III. Williams' combination of musical finesse and immense collection of guitars led Bethesda to recruit him for the role of first lead guitar. Nah, this one's just a backup. My real one's freaking intense. It's got, like, three necks and probably 36 strings. It caught fire last year and burned half the body, so now it's got this really sick tone, too. It's good shit. I call her Bessie. After a heavy tour circuit, the band inked a record deal and released their first single, Baby Won't You Love With Me. It was a financial failure, and their label, in an attempt to move Bethesda out of the United States to avoid negative publicity, paid for the band to move to England. Searching for a sound that could add an edge to their style, the band began auditions for a keyboardist. It was in the UK where they met Jane Buffington, who helped refine Bethesda's brash rock and roll style. Well, I just finished my time on the inside near the East End, having been caught with a couple of bandmates sitting around and getting cabbage day in day out. Didn't try none of it myself, but the Bobbies had an eye on one of those sods ventures since the happening. So hacked off as I was, I said, I'm going to do the off and keep the pepper up with some other group of nutters. Then so it happens, I get a bell from my mate Tony rambling all about some audition. For Even if no one could fully understand her, Buffington transformed the hair metal oriented Bethesda into a far more sophisticated ensemble. The result of this, their sophomore effort, What is the Sound of Love, was a critical and commercial success. When I think of my heroes, Einstein, Da Vinci, Plato, Hendrix, I try to get into their state of mind and what they'd do if they were able to live in our musical period. Would their lyrics be about sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Or would it be all that, but more philosophical? When I write, I think of Two, two things. Number A, drugs. Number two, love. And number D, love and drugs at the same time. Drove, so to speak. Combined with a widespread and grueling European tour, the album sold over one million copies in its first month of release. But upon returning to the studio following their tour, the group's future was about to take a turn for the worse. Overcome with his sudden fame, cheesesteak babyface Willis began abusing drugs. The move was criticized by his fellow bandmates, who in particular decried his adoption of a faux British accent. Well, I think it's a load of bollocks, really. It's not like I'm telling kids, you know, to go out and do drugs, you know, so I'm not harming anyone. Uh, you know, why get on me for my occasional escapades or, you know, 15 of them? Tragedy struck the band, however, on September 27, 1987, when Willis was found dead from a deadly overdose of nicotine and heroin. Researchers reported that Willis, while under the influence, inserted 38 cigarettes into his body's various orifices and died that evening. The band was crushed. Unable to cope with the event emotionally, Bethesda disbanded the following day, vowing never to reunite or conduct an interview due to the loss. However, as a farewell message to fans, the band decided to release their final single and music video prior to Willis's death. Tonight is the night that we find our way to love. It all started when I was uh, checking the time as I was trying to think of lyrics. And as I was doing it, I realized something big. Time is not a constraint on uh, how much we can love someone. You can do it today, tomorrow. What did I contribute? I try to contribute wisdom. I pulled out my guitar and clacked out the melody, which them dozy mare guitarists then nicked for their own lines. Would you add him an eve that? And a song, as far as me good old lady Godiva's concerned, though I'll say she hasn't lost the plot by the foot of the stairs into the weasel and stoat spot of that knocking shop halfway north of Diamond Geezer. I would like to tell you that I wrote this song on drugs, but I really can't. I, I wrote it on gratuitous amounts of drugs. And, and therein lies the difference in the writing. It's more about love 
and less about love. Sure.